Uh, our next speaker is a barrister from Melbourne. He's a senior lecturer at La Trobe Uni, and some of you may have heard him speak at the Samuel Griffith uh, Society conferences in the past. Past everyone, Keith Kendall. Thanks there, Rod. Uh, I promise I won't be uh, too long because I'm, like everyone else, quite interested to hear uh, Jim tell us why Sinclair got it all wrong there. So I'm um, quite looking forward to that. Tiny little thing. Okay. <laughs> um, as um, Rod mentioned, I've spoken at Sam Griffith Society a, a few times. One of the areas uh, that I have addressed is the um, uh, prospect of, being, of the states being able to introduce or reintroduce their own income taxes. Uh, and this is a nice little lead-in from uh, Sinclair's talk, uh, talking about how um, well we want local governments telling us what to do. Is that the good thing you've got wrong? <laughs> I'm not sure if the government's telling us what to do, but anyway, the um, one of the major points with that, uh, and simply made it in his discussion as well, that uh, for governments to be able to function in the way that they're intended, they do need to have their own uh, uh, revenue raising capacity. Now, an important point to to remember with this conversation is frequently. Uh, indicated in the mainstream press and the like that the states have had their income tax raising powers taken away by the Commonwealth and this was is usually attributed to back in uh, World War II when um, uh, the lawyers in the room will know about the uniform tax cases where uh, effectively <coughs> the, rep the income tax raising capacity was taken by the Commonwealth. But, to this day, from day one and to this day, the states have always retained their abilities to raise their own income taxes. Now, one of the problems, uh, Sinclair went through quite a fair bit about uh, the problem of vertical fiscal imbalance, the problem where uh, the states uh, don't raise much of the revenue, but are required to undertake most of the spending. And so this creates an obvious problem where the, um, the, com uh, the states are dependent on the Commonwealth and we refer back to Alfred Deakin's uh, notes back in the early days of Federation, the states are really being chained to the chariot wheel, uh, the fiscal chariot wheels of the Commonwealth. Um, they're uh, not being able to um, raise their own revenue but being responsible for most of the expenditure, they are really beholden to the Commonwealth Government uh, and this enables the Commonwealth to start uh, imposing through various constitutional mechanisms the uh, Commonwealth policy in areas that the Constitution never intended for it to, to take place. Um, and we've seen both sides of politics do this. Um, <coughs> so the constant overreach by the Commonwealth Government uh, you don't have to look at it, uh, find several examples of that even in recent history. But uh, the model that I'm proposing, to, and uh, it seems like it's um, uh, time sort of coming for these sorts of things with both a uh, tax reform, uh, uh, well, an allegedly real tax reform discussion taking place. It's better than the last one at least. Um, but the, uh, and also a long promised federalism review, so we're getting both tax and a federalism review in the one year, so uh, the time might be right for these sorts of ideas to, to come forward. Essentially, uh, there's been a bit of talk recently about state income tax, or the states bringing their, uh, uh, raising their own income taxes in recent days. Uh, it's the last couple of years where this has started uh, gaining a little bit of traction. But it tends to be talked about in isolation only. And what I'm proposing is more of a package of reforms. And in particular, rather than just merely leaving it at a simplistic level, states should be raising their own income taxes. What my proposal is that the state should, be, should retake the area of personal income tax, corporate income tax stays with the Commonwealth, 
And uh, one of the main, um, probably the single biggest reason for that is particularly in this day and age, it's too easy for companies uh, to move around. It's very easy to operate a company from Queensland where the real people involved are in South Australia, for example. Uh, not so, uh, sorry? What company would that be? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, whereas people aren't able to move around quite so freely. Um, it's very difficult to live in one state and work in another state. Uh, the way Australia has been set up, or the way Australia has developed, I should say. So personal income taxes going to the states, uh, company income taxes remaining with the Commonwealth, and the GST remains as a Commonwealth uh, statute, but the GST revenue goes with the Commonwealth. This would resolve a lot of the problems associated with uh, the uh, GST distribution that we've seen with Western Australia uh, lightly copping it in the neck. Um, that's probably the best way of uh, describing that. So the, um, that essentially that would resolve a lot of the need for this dependence on the Commonwealth Grants Program that's required. Uh, I did a uh, brief analysis a few years ago, and I have to confess I haven't updated the figures associated with this, but back when I had a look, the, amount, the amounts of money that the Commonwealth were distributing in terms of general grants was roughly equal to the amount it was raising in personal income tax, which was an interesting observation, I thought, because in that way, on an aggregate basis at least, as I did, um, wasn't possible on the figures that I had to do it through a state-by-state -state, uh, analysis. We, by devolving the personal income tax to the states, by retaining the GST uh, revenue and effectively not or uh, undertaking any general grants anymore, on an aggregate basis it's effectively revenue neutral and you wouldn't be getting the sort of churn, we wouldn't need a bureaucracy to administer the grant scheme so much. So there's efficiency gains in that sense as well. So uh, I've spoken for the best part of 10 minutes now by the looks of this, so look, I'll wrap up um, in a moment. Um, the, uh, no doubt there'll be some questions regarding that. Uh, any tax people in the room will have a myriad of questions, but that's my basic proposal to trying to come some way to resolving the uh, vertical fiscal imbalance problem, which is at the root of most of the issues we've got with federalism, I'd say, and uh, promoting uh, in particular competitive federalism with that.